This is Volvo's V40. The V is Volvo's way of telling you it's a wagon. The 40 tells you it's the littlest member of the Volvo family, sitting under the 60 and the 90. That T4 badge means it has a petrol engine and the inscription grade is the plush one in the lineup. Okay, formalities taken care of. Now there's something else that you really should know. It's old. They've been selling that same car since 2012. Yeah, sure, they've made updates over the years. There's been new engines. In 2016, they gave it those Hammer of Thor LED running lights. And then last year, in 2017, they added more standard kit, like keyless entry, blind spot warning, and an alarm. The thing is, there's something else you should know. You should know there's a completely new generation V40 coming out soon. Okay, so when I say soon, I mean 2019 soon, which is not really soon. That's when I reckon the new generation V40 will be coming out. And if that hasn't given you a, a mini crisis, then the following news might. Volvo is releasing a small SUV. They're calling it the XC40. It's a SUV version of the V40. Now, there are other brands to choose from as well. There's Audi's A3 Sportback and there's BMW's 1 Series. Those are the V40's natural enemies in the wild. So you've kind of got a good dilemma on your hands if, if, if you want a Volvo, if it has to be a Volvo. You could wait for the new V40 to come out. You could get an XC40 when it comes out this year. Or, now stay with me, you could get this current V40. And I'm gonna tell you why. First up, those looks. Even after six years, the V40 is still beautiful. It's aged so well. I like that nose and the new Thor's Hammer LED running lights, that heavily raked windscreen, that tailgate. The inscription grade has the glossy trim around the side of the windows and 17 inch alloy wheels. Inside, the inscription's cabin is still cool and interesting. That molded dash, those sumptuous leather seats, the milled aluminium center console, the digital instruments, Next, safety. When the V40 came out in 2012, it had the world's first pedestrian airbag, an advanced safety equipment that's only just making it onto cars now. Things like AEB with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control, auto parking, blind spot and rear cross traffic warning, even lane keeping assistance. The inscription comes with a pretty good standard features list. You've got the leather upholstery, you've got a seven inch touchscreen, a CD player, a DVD player. You've got an eight speaker stereo, you've got sat nav, you've got a reversing camera, and you've got dual zone climate control. So you're not gonna be missing out on any safety tech. But then there's the tech inside the cabin. That screen, it's a seven inch screen and it's tiny. It's tiny by today's standards, very tiny by Volvo standards. The new V40 will have a larger portrait screen. And then there are all these buttons. You've got climate control buttons and you've got a numerical keypad like in a phone booth to call people. All of these buttons will be moved to the screen in the new V40. But that brings me to something else you should know. This is my old phone. This is my new phone. Now, the screen on this isn't as big, it's not as sleek, it's not as fast, it's not as clever, but I really miss this phone. I miss its functionality. I'm, I miss that I can hold it in my hand. I miss that when I take a photo, it doesn't turn the volume up like it does on this phone. And that's what I mean about the functionality of the current V40. All these dials just make things so much easier. On the new V40, to change the climate, you'll have to access it through a screen like you do on the XC60, and I found that a nightmare. But on this one, it's just a dial. You can go 23 or 19, so much easier. And a real handbrake. And that numerical keypad is not such a bad idea. See, this V40 is kind of like this old phone, and this is your last chance to have a new old V40. Okay, let's take this for a drive. Look, one of the things I love about Volvos is how over-engineered they are. They are just so solid and they just feel so well built and you can really feel that in the V40. Even in its design, it feels over-engineered, like these door panels. They're sort of concave so that when you turn the wheel, your elbow doesn't hit the side of the door. Brilliant. And those washer jets, look at them. They are hardcore industrial grade water jets. You spray the window and it, that is hardcore. They're like laser cannons from the Hoth planet from Star Wars. I love them. 
Another thing I really love is that engine. It's a two litre, four cylinder turbo petrol engine. It's not the most powerful in the range, that's the T5. It's not the weakest in the range, that's the T3. This is the T4. 140 kilowatts, 300 newton meters, that is plenty. And the way it is programmed in terms of throttle, it's always under your foot. That's what I like. So you can duck in traffic if you need to and overtaking power is really good as well. Okay, handling. Handling is pretty impressive for something in this class. Ride is a little bit firm. It's still comfy, it's just a little bit firm. And there seems to be an issue, it's not a problem, but the suspension is a little bit noisy. Like, there's a speed bump. It's just a little bit clunky as you can hear the shock absorbers compressing and the springs doing their springy business. It's a little bit loud, a little bit agricultural. It's not, not a deal breaker at all. Steering, steering is a little bit heavy as well. I mean, it's reassuringly heavy. The car is actually quite a bit heavier. It's about 140 kilos or 170 kilos, I think, heavier than the BMW 1 Series. And you can feel that, that extra weight so those fuel consumption figures that we've been getting in the real world are actually a bit higher than, than what Volvo say you should be getting. They reckon with open roads and you know urban roads you should be getting about 5.6 litres per 100 and we've been seeing more than that. Now I said at the start that the V in V40 is Volvo's way of saying it belongs to the wagon family. It's actually, this is, the V40 is more of a hatch. Um, v really stands for versatility. So let's just see how versatile the V40 really is. Okay, back seat. Hey, check out this door. It's tiny and it doesn't open any wider than, than that. That's, that's a small aperture. And so is this roof line here. I keep hitting my head on this A-pillar because of the heavily raked windscreen. Anyway, let me show you the back seat. Okay. Okay. Now, this seat's in my driving position. I'm 191 centimetres tall, which is pretty tall for a human being. And I've got about a finger's width gap between my knee and the seat back. That's getting pretty tight. And headroom, now I've got pretty big hair. I've got about the same amount of gap between my head and the roof as well. I wouldn't want it to be any more snug than that. Still, it's, it's a pass, but only just. Let me show you the boot. Now, over the weekend, my wife wanted to do a trip to the tip. Now, don't worry, Volvo, we didn't take the V40 to the tip. That's because the boot is too small. Even with those seats folded flat, it's still not huge. And even the aperture itself is not massive. Yes, there's storage under the floor and little nooks and crannies, which are smart and clever, but it's still not giant. So this is your last chance to buy a new old V40. And there's a lot going for it. Looks, safety, it's great to drive, and as its time comes to an end, you're probably going to get a good price on it as well. But then again, the new V40 is coming out. So what's it going to be? The old one or the new one? And just to make that decision even more difficult, there's the XC40 coming as well.